No, I'm really serious. I think that's a good idea. Just talking? Well, what's the show about? It's about nothing. <laughs> no story? No, forget the story. You gotta have a story. Who says you gotta have a story? Some men aren't looking for anything logical. Welcome to Frivolous Fandom. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to Frivolous Fandom with Mike. With Kev. And I'm Mike. And I am Kev. And we're repetitive. And our topic today should be real obvious. Pretty pretty clear. Was that you don't have any idea what it is? <laughs> okay, well maybe it wasn't so obvious. Mike, let's break it down. What is today's topic? Fake fictitious fighting follies. So what we mean by the fake, fictitious fighting follies is errors in the martial arts choreography in fake movies. That's yes. right. We don't appreciate unrealistic stuff happening in our movies. We are going to be picking the nittiest of the picks <laughs> yes. on this. I- I'm going to just come out and say. Admittedly, we are coming out. I'm a bit clean. of a fascist right. when it comes to these things. I <laughs> yes. am. I really am. You're com- bit of a commie. You're a bit of a combatical fa- fascist. Yeah, I'm like a commie fascist. The worst kind. So, Mike, why are you such a <laughs> combatical fascist? Because I have a movie long... Movie combatical. Movie, a movie combatical fascist. I am... Um, I, I have a pretty I have a pretty rich history with the martial arts. I say that with my pinky in the air, but you can't see it. <laughs> um, you know, the first one I ever did was um, Taekwondo. I, if you could call it that. It was like little kid Taekwondo back when I was in like... First Is Taekwondo day. the one you're always making fun of? Oh, yes, it is, but okay. that's a whole other deal. It's actually, I, okay, it's the best thing to start your kid out with, in my opinion. Because it's not dangerous at all. And because it's excellent training techniques. But anyways, I can... Teach us the discipline. I gotta be careful, because I can literally go off on these for hours. Okay. So I gotta keep myself reined keep in. It, keep it reined in. So you have a great background with martial arts, uh, most recently... What have you been into? You're a wrestler. Yeah, I wrestled high I, school. I wrestled for like ten years. Started in grade school all the way through until I got hurt and I had to stop for a couple of years. And then in the meantime, I did Huang Do, a little bit of karate with a couple of friends. I didn't do it formally. Like I never got the belt system, but I did. I did train pretty consistently with some high school friends. Right. Um, and then in college, I picked up pancreation, which for any of you who are not like super history historical um, martial art enthusiasts. Is considered by most people to be the first martial art. Started in Greece, brought over by Alexander the Great to India, which then spawned Indian, which then spawned Chinese, and yada yada. yada. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. But mostly submission, rudimentary submission wrestling with striking. 
Although it's it, the, st- the style we do is more, ba- it's basically MMA. And so through MMA, I've dabbled in Muay Thai, I've dabbled in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I've dabbled in res- in, in combat wrestling, and I've dabbled in boxing. All the martial arts the kids are into these days. Yeah. You know, so I've gotten I've gotten a healthy dose of everything, and I've at least seen what it's supposed to look like. Right. That and I'm probably the only 320 pound guy you know who can do an actual roundhouse kick. So <laughs> if you guys cannot tell, uh, Mike's kind of into this stuff. Mm-hmm. The extent of my combat experience is that sometimes I like to slap people and they're not ready for it. Uh, he likes to choke me or try to. I, have kinda... <laughs> I like to choke people not ready for it. I really just like to beat on people when they don't deserve it and aren't ready for it. <laughs> my Joe or, or uh, my Jay Leno bushy brushed <laughs> chin prevents him from choking me most of the time. I like the crimson chin, man. I'm like, nope. <laughs> it's like I only know one hold. It's choke hold, and you just denied it, you jerk. <laughs> um, so the thing is that me and Mike do have in common, though, is that we both have a great interest and experience in watching action films. Mm-hmm. I will not claim to be a great martial artist, but I will claim to have watched a lot of movies in my day. Oh yeah, and so you know, many of them together. Yeah, the yeah, recently. it's definitely we obviously. If you cannot tell from this cast, we watch a lot of movies together. It's kind of how this whole thing got started. And then, you know, it's kind of interesting getting Mike's take mm. on certain things. Because, I, you know, I never really cared. I still don't care quite to the extent you mm. do, but mm-hmm. I still now... Put, I, I raised my pinky halfway. It's, I'm like, it's a curled con- pinky, but it's I'm not... I'm slowly converting him. It, yeah. it did my heart proud when you, you know. when you looked at me and go, Yeah, that punch was way too wide. <laughs> like, yes! <laughs> yes! Right? And he was like, he didn't pivot correctly there. There'd be no... Leverage on that punch. Um, I just make a giant yes sign <laughs> with, my, with my fist. So we kind of just would go back and forth watching movies and being like, oh, that's just, that's dumb. Or that was really good. I like how that looked. A, looked incredible. And B, was feasible. Um, yep. And C, wasn't, it was a real guy doing it, not a computer. <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit about it, Mike. Um, first and foremost, modern day movie making has made the action genre I think has made the biggest impact obviously the action genre. Oh yeah. Romantic so. comedies, I mean I guess now you can have like a baby puke and all kinds of like terrible <laughs> CG effects that I've seen in like in like comedy movies yeah. in recent years. But for the most part it's, it's, it's the same that it ever was. Yeah. But when it comes to the action genre and then, you know, with all the hand to hand stuff where guys are flying around the screen and Yeah. You know, starting but, with the Matrix and then sort of going onwards till modern day. What are some things that you've seen in more of, let's say, the past 10 years of filmmaking? So basically, you can have more bodies doing more stuff through CG. Right. Which is which can be good. You know, for instance, Lord of the Rings. You mm-hmm. know, those epic fight scenes. You don't need to stare at all of the individual fighters, or mm-hmm. soldiers in this case. Right. Uh, you don't really need to, and you shouldn't. I don't recommend <laughs> it. <laughs> like, Might make your mind boggle a little bit. Yeah. Um, you have more boom, you have more bang, you have more you more know, flips, flash flips yeah. and air cartwheels and 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 honestly, to somewhat of a detriment in that way. Like you go back and watch House of Flying Daggers. You know, any Chinese film buffs know what I'm talking about, or I guess American Chinese film buffs. There's a great deal of Chinese cinema that's not kung fu <laughs> film, and I don't want to sound ethnocentrist, but of what gets here is usually kung fu. So any Chinese fans, forgive me. I know you guys have more than kung, kung All fu. All our films. Chinese fans out there, yeah, you know, just in case, don't come at Mike with some hate mail or yeah. anything, <laughs> or some hate email. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to bomb people with hate with hate email. I've realized. Tell that to the trolls. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm dropping bombs. Um. Anyways, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> no worries. The wire foo. Back when actual wires had to do it, was kind of cool. Right. You know, at least you. I mean, you know, you, you're looking at the person, and, and it's their tangible body. Now they get away with stuff like the Matrix is a really good example. You had CG being used to a wonderful. Did you effect. call them the matrices? Did we, I? I don't know. I don't think you did. Oh, no, sorry. So the Matrix Our friend trilogy. Chris was talking to me. Oh, yeah, yeah, He's yeah. like, <laughs> I, I was like, the Matrix movie, or the Matrix is, and he's like, you mean matrices. <laughs> and you stop and realize you're right, you grammar Nazi. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Wachowski brothers didn't think that far ahead, okay? There should have only been one of them. Uh, I, dude, I stand by that. I mean, I... Not. Nah, uh, not that, not that, not that... You know what? We need to do our cat... There's another podcast. Yes, we need is. to do the podcast about sequels that are remembered as being worse than they actually are. Yeah, because Reloaded I, wasn't that bad. It wasn't. Right. It, it was... There was a couple things about it that make it seem way worse than it actually is. Pale um, albino people with dreadlocks? Do not, the ghosts, 
I mean, they're okay. <laughs> <laughs> cool things happen with them. I think they're, the characters themselves are pretty stupid, but. Yeah. Um, anyways, so is it necessarily a good thing, Mike? All the, like, the capabilities that have been expanded and all the new things that, the brink of your imagination is pretty much the end of what you can do. Most of the time, I think we agree on this, the answer is no. And there are exceptions, of course. For instance, you, and, and specifically, when I, what I think of as being improved now is camera angles. Right. The things that have improved are in choreography and stunt use. And just the longer that people have been trying to do this stuff, they get better at it. People don't get hurt as much. And you have professional mixed martial artists, professional, you know, Taekwondo world ranked Olympic people who before didn't actually have any way to make money. <laughs> right. Are now being hired to either train the actor to do it in the case of people like Channing Tatum. Right. Who have the physical aptitude to perform these movements. Did the new Wachowski movie come out yet, by the way? Uh, With Channing Tatum in it? I don't know. I'm sorry. You just made me think about that. Yeah. No, no worries. Because I, I, it looks terrible, but I kind of wanted to see it. Well, and I bring up Channing Tatum because more than a couple of people... In well, the he's Marshall... one of the actors that actually kind of has like the athleticism, it seems. Yeah. K- Kung Lee openly said, and the Kung Lee is a former... Is a, he's, a, he's a Chinese mixed martial arts champion, but I think he's by blood Vietnamese. doesn't matter. Um, See, guys, he's really into this stuff. Yeah, he's 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 an expert, and he openly says, out of all these celebrities he's trained, Channing Tatum, if he dropped what he was doing right now and trained full time, could compete could at, the, fight. at the ultimate level. That's and cool. I'm like, wow, that's a compliment, right? But, anywho's, I mean, he let's I'll say this about Channing Tatum: I think he's more likely to drop and being an actor and being successful in Ultimate Fighting than Jonah Hill. <laughs> and my, yeah, my expertise, I would say. Yeah, I can't prove that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So there are exceptions, though, um, to this whole ridiculousness that has crept into the kung fu fighting in movies. So yeah, or just martial arts, we'll say in movies. Well, and it, and it begs to be said, the reason why we are still like giving a, a tentative no is uh, take take Darth Vader versus Luke Skywalker, or you know what? Let's go. Let's go. Let's push our bet. Darth Vader versus Obi Wan. <laughs> New boat is no, a that better, was just bad. Man. Is a better fight scene from a from a, from a from a viewer perspective mm-hmm. than even you know the Mustafar fight right. scene. Clearly, Vader versus Luke. Those both any of those are better, yeah. are better. But and we'll get we'll get into why. But I argue anybody who has seen all of the Star Wars movies go back and watch Luke versus Darth Vader in the first couple. Or the second couple, really. <laughs> and and, and, and then, have to be older than, they have to be older than 16. Yeah, you're right. Oh, sorry. If, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you need to have the perspective, the proper context. Then go watch any of the lightsaber duels from, like, episode 2 or 3. And it's just obvious which are better. But but not necessarily technically. Because tech, in terms of, like, the technical aspect of it and all the production value that goes into it, obviously the, the newer Star Wars blow away the old ones. You guys, you have guys flying around and doing force this it's and force insane. that. and But it, it, there's a point where it gets to be too much. A shark, a shark, a shark got jumped, rocketed over, rocket jumped over, and then <laughs> tossed in the air, and then quad right. jumped over. I mean, right. it's... And I think, you know... We, we might, get it. They're good. <laughs> they're the best. They're on another level, I'm sure. Like, give me the, uh, what do you call it, the um, abridged version. Well, okay, several times in that fight, you see those guys literally swinging their blades behind their backs mm. to hit the other blade. Right. Which is funny, because <laughs> can you swing a lightsaber harder, technically, because there's no weight, right? I mean, there's the handle, but your hand, it's totally in your hands. There's no weight reaching out, extending to the edge of this blade, where, like, bringing it down harder. Am I wrong? Well, and here's the folly of, of doing what we're doing right now with a lightsaber. It is well, we said it. Un- we it said is such an unfeasible <laughs> weapon right, to right. begin with. Right. We said we were taking it too seriously. <laughs> though. So, I, you know, I think we've actually talked about the old version of New Star Wars, but, you know, we're yeah. gonna, we'll go into some more depth with it. Mm. So, here's the thing. There are exceptions that we're we're gonna say okay these take it too far but it's awesome so full out kung fu flicks like the matrix like uh, crouching tiger hidden dragon all the stuff with the wire work where forbidden kingdom you yeah know, I, I mean I, it's it... stuff where it's like it, it would be like watching airplane and saying I don't like that movie it's dumb which I've heard people say but it's <laughs> like saying that 
Yeah, <laughs> you of didn't course. Get it. Yeah, dumb was <laughs> why the whole point of that movie was that it was dumb and it was gonna make you. Does laugh the term so meta mean anything to you? <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's, it's same thing with these kung fu flicks. That it's like, of course, none of this stuff is feasible. It's all ridiculous, but that, but that's why it's awesome. It's part of the universe, right? And there, I, I, I will say also, the technology has and the and the the the, com, the completion of prowess of movie style fighting has actually spawned kind of a more realistic kung fu flick. Mm-hmm. You know, the more of the Jet Li, more of the Donnie Yen kind of stuff. You know, Eat Mon, um, Fear, or, uh, Fearless. Well, but even those movies. Have their liberties. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But it, but it's much more, it's much grittier. It's like they're not. Nobody's getting like nobody's doing a double backflip like corkscrew off the <laughs> off the table in those ones, and then hitting six people. Like right. it kind of. Ha- I mean, in Itmon bends the bends the rules with this one a little bit with the crowd fighting. But let's be honest, crowd fighting doesn't end well for the one right ever <laughs> ever yeah. But anyway, and then the other <laughs> exception to this is animated films and cartoons, with the exception, or like a- CG films of the god awful, the undescribable, the unmentionable. After this, Last Airbender. Oh, what do you mean? <laughs> One pebble with the earth bending. Oh, are you talking about Korra? No, I'm talking about I'm not Shamalama Lama Lama Ding Shamalama Ding Dong. Oh, how they had to do so much stuff. Yeah. Well, that movie's just bad, Mike. Please, let's <laughs> not even bring. Up, we're, you're killing our vibe right now by even bringing that up. But with CG movies and cartoons, the disbelief is already sort of suspended. Like you already have the context. I'm watching a cartoon. Yeah, yeah. I'm watching a computer generated cartoon. Whatever it is. And so when they are doing crazy awesome things, you go with it because mm-hmm. it's the same thing as airplane. You go into it knowing what you're getting, and you and then you enjoy the over the top, the suspension of disbelief, ridiculous is things, right? Because that's the whole point of cartoons is you can do things in them that you can't do in real life mm-hmm. um, until computers. <laughs> yeah. So you know, let's talk about some of the differences, Mike, between old some of the older style way they had just out of necessity the way they sort of had to film it back in the day was it had to be more realistic because they had less special effects but one of the biggest differences that i see and we'll start out with the old star wars versus new star wars we'll kind of use that as a template let's Mm. say for all of these uh specific things that we're talking about the tension Mm -hmm. that the way that tension builds and rises with the old style Star Wars and with the old way of filmmaking before they could do all this crazy stuff is just superior because it sort of dissipates. You you would think that the more crazy it gets and the more they flip around and fight and go, you'd think it would get more tense. See, the more stuff that's exploding, you'd think it would get more intense. And I argue you can actually make it as intense with shorter bursts. Right. Because you basically, your tolerance... And yeah, I mean it, it's we'll get to that. Yeah. Uh, but 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 at the end of the day, the tension the tension is is a is a portion of you know how much time is spent in a proper deadlock. Right. How much time is spent? You know, for instance, when when Obi Wan fights Darth Vader, they're testing each other out, right. and then they lock up, and then it just goes because they're like, okay, I I feel like not I feel like both of them are in in a position to where, you know, they're they're scared. As they should be. It's right. a fight to the death. <laughs> right. You know, the problem with Anakin fighting Obi-Wan is that it looked like a really, really weird foreplay between them. It really <laughs> did. It was just, it was the weirdest mating, it was the weirdest mating dance I've ever seen. Right. And they're just like, like balleting at each other and, and it just happened to be that they were, they were, they were fighting well, with little, yeah, it's like, know, it's like you were talking about when, you know, Anna, if Anakin is winging his blade way behind his head, wouldn't it make sense if you're Obi Wan to just like use your lightsaber like a rapier and just jab him real yeah. fast? <laughs> yeah. But no, he he's like, you know what? If you're doing that, I'm gonna let you do that. I'm gonna rare mine back cool. all the same as well. Well, you know, and it bears to mention though, the Darth Maul fight does stick out. It is much better. It is way yeah. better. Well, it's funny because I even used, with the I thought that was a double fight. blade, right? But it's not. It really isn't. I thought that was a long fight, but yeah, it, it, I, rewatching it whenever it came out. 3D or whatever, it's it's really not the same. It seems long because the way they intercut that with the other stuff that's happening, with 
Anakin blowing up single handedly all the stuff, and he doesn't even know what buttons you mean, do you what mean in the ship. You mean Tin Tin flying yeah. through the Nazi base? And oh, what does this everything? button do? Oh, it, it perfectly aims and. We all know R two D two was flying that plane. Yeah, Anakin right. doesn't. Anakin didn't do anything. <laughs> but anyways, um, so but then when you get to the third, by the time by the time you get to the Revenge of the Sith. It's just so crazy. That fight is like 30 minutes long, and you know that the whole time they're getting close to cutting each other, you're like, yeah, no, they're not going to cut anything yet, because I can tell that they have more set pieces that they've you know, designed even Yoda, this. Even Yoda and Dooku was still manageable, in my opinion. Because, yeah, that was still pretty ridiculous. <laughs> I, mean, it was, it was, I mean, it was nuts, but at least with Yoda, you're like, okay, there's no other way a midget with no reach... With a tiny little, cute little two-year-old Well, lightsaber. they should never, to be honest, they kind of should never had him fight like that. They should have just had him, like, force choke him out or something. Or at least be very technical, like right. getting inside of somebody, which is probably the only thing a small person really like does Like, he have. should have, like, force untied his shoelace <laughs> and then made him trip on it or something. Well, you know, just just complete force domination, and then on top of that, you know, you could, yeah. it, it's it's difficult. Like, I didn't mind Yoda so much just because of constraints right. for writing, but I think right. everybody liked Yoda right. so much. They had to give him his time. And they were like, okay, everybody's got to be nuts, because Dooku, I actually liked the way they did Dooku's version of fighting right. it was elegant it was fencing it literally was they they weren't sitting there doing the stupid like back foot cartwheel stuff <laughs> he was always on two feet and he was he was he was you know he would guide your blade where he right. wanted it and he would trick you and it right. was great but anyways we're dwelling on that too well and then it, another example of this is um from the matrix the fight where he fights all the smiths the that fight is awesome for about half of it yeah, and then it just goes over. And the then top. it just goes for too long. And the shark like, is just like, whoa. You're right. You're like, clearly, <laughs> there, there's no more tension anymore. You're like, okay, clearly they're just going to keep doing this till they've got out all the bag of tricks that they were hoping for, and nothing's going to change because the movie still has yeah. an hour left, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> well, you know what? And, and even if you look at, if you look at Attack of the Clones, when Anakin and Obi-Wan are about to fight Dooku, it does actually build the tension very well. Mm. Like, Obi-Wan's like, Anakin, don't go at him alone. <laughs> and then don't he does. be, and he, oh, you idiot. Right. And so, I mean, and, and there's so many, I mean, I can't even say how many good examples they have of this in, in traditional movies, because you, you have that real sense of danger, because everything's mono a mono, it's person right. to person. Right. And well, that, and, you know, that's why I think that less, less computers for sure, and less... And Tarantino's actually a good example of this. I know we've already beaten that one scene between Beatrix Kiddo and Reno Ishii. To death, right? But this embodies it perfectly. How right. little to no so CG l- and little to no room for error. If they're truly masters at the highest level and they're both trying to kill each other, well, specifically with katanas, yeah, right. They're not. You don't clang katanas. A, they'll break and shatter, and shards hurt. Right. B, it's a game of chicken where you get a couple of lockups. Right. You know. You know. There, it's 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 cutting. It's not not hacking. Right. It's just like tension. If if you want true tension. True tension stems from the fact that you are worried that at any moment either one person could die and you don't know who it is. Mm. And for tension to truly work, it has to be timed right. Mm-hmm. And if you you can build it up so far, and if you exceed it, then you're going to lose it altogether. And so, and abruptness can actually be useful too, because if you look at the Born trilogy and people, or the new Bond trilogy, mm. it's a trilogy now. Right? It yeah, is now, trilogy, yeah. yeah. I, people often forget, about, forget about the second one because it wasn't nearly as good. But but those fight scenes, everyone hated them because it wasn't Bond like doing like the, the two handed like up <laughs> the Star Trek fighting, the most retarded hey, thing the, I've ever seen. But whoosh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anybody, I mean, I'm gonna tackle you. <laughs> yeah, just just really silly stuff. And then you have, I mean, the it's it's. it's I will tackle you. Yeah, pretty much. It, 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 but then contrasted with two handed solar plexus strike. Yeah, and or or karate chop, judo chop. <laughs> my favorite, my favorite movie. Hi-ya! Like to the neck, and they just fall over, and I Duke, go, and they you know what? Out. I'm gonna give you a free one. Do it. Here, should we talk about that? <laughs> how easily people get knocked out in, oh, in dear. movies? How easy? How hard is it to knock someone 100 percent unconscious? I'm, I'm curious. It's, I don't a, know. it's a it's a trick question. You hit him in the right place with enough force. Very easy. Hit him in the wrong place with not enough you force. Really difficult, actually. <laughs> I mean, it, now they're in much so much pain that they are much more awake than they were before. <laughs> well, for instance, if I nail you in the eye temple, I mean, okay, preface: I am a big guy. 
if in case anybody hasn't caught that joke, us joking about my weight or <laughs> my overall intimidation factor with people around, I'm a big dude. And I do have more training than your average bear. So, <laughs> on average, if if you're going to roll the dice, can I take somebody on random out of the crowd? The answer is probably yes. In a fist fight, <laughs> just because I'm three times most people's size. No ego involved. It doesn't mean anything. That being said... Hardcore, or it, hard... Um, ground facts, yeah. baby. Yeah, but so if you know if I, if somebody catches an elbow from me, my arm is a conservative estimate, a good 45, 50 pounds. That elbow bone hitting your eye temple, you're gonna you're not you're gonna be seeing fuzzy colors at least. You might be knocked out. If I catch you under the chin, it's a nerve thing. It's it's. I think. What about back of the back head? of the I head thought... is awkward. If you can get their brain to actually collide with right. the side of their skull. But then you've just given them a concussion. Yeah, and that's, that's literally what it is. So I mean, that's usually what it is in movies. It's like the butt of the gun to the back of the head. I'm and like, and that one that one's decent enough. The problem is you're very very likely to permanently injure them, like knock them out and have them wake up okay <laughs> the next. No, that's not how that works. Right. If you actually want to, re- I mean, and, and a nobody renders other people unconscious to transport them. <laughs> they just tie them up. You're right because it's just so, it's too un un. Uh, what's what I'm looking for? It's too, Unspecific? No, yeah. that's what I'm looking for. It's too it's, it's imprecise. Too, it's, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. If you need that person to be okay... Just tie them up and gag them. Hitting them in the head is not a safe bet. Let right, me right. repeat the, let me repeat that. Getting hit in the head with any amount of force is not conducive I hate to, to any I health. I hate to quote the Joker, but <laughs> never start with the head. Yeah, the victim but, gets all fuzzy. fuzzy. <laughs> yeah, like, like, Where are they? See? <laughs> I don't know. Um... <laughs> I never caught that before. Yeah. That's actually pretty funny. He, I forget what he said. I'm trying to think what he says, but he basically, he like punches him in the hand or whatever, and he's like, where are they? And then he just goes, see? Like, he looks at him like, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> like, you guys not listening. Oh, rest in peace, um, Heath Ledger. That was wonderful. But anywho, we were kind of already um, easing into this, but less is more most of the time. Actually, mo- most, most if not all. Right. I mean, you would. The BA scale is very, very tricky thing. It's sensitive. It's sensitive. You would think, okay, it's so like, it's like a brake pad. This broken in car. This plus this makes the this awesome. So if I just keep adding more of that, it's just gonna keep getting more awesome. That's what you think. Cough, cough, <laughs> slow mo. So you're like, oh, okay, yeah. that backflip plus that explosion behind him made it this cool. Now if he did as a Sick tuple backflip with 44 explosions. <laughs> it's going to be that much better. And then you're like, no, this is ridiculous. You're like, I'm feeling the brain cells leave my head you're through right. my ears. Right. You're like, okay, none of this is even close to real anymore. I'm I'm pulled out of it. I don't even care. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, that that's what it really comes down to for me. Don't jump the shark. Right. Don't, don't take us out. Right. You know, I, there are some exceptions to this. Like, you know, uh, you're watching a stupid... But fun, shoot them up. Okay, explosions are part of the deal. Every car that is hit by a straight pistol bullet is going to blow up, and we love it. <laughs> but if you're even trying to be, I mean, hand to hand combat is so different because, and weapon combat is so different. Like, there's, like, you, you never have a good knife fight in a movie. And I don't want a good knife fight in a movie. Right. Let me be very clear about that. Real knife fights are messy. They are ugly. They are putrid. They are bad. Right. Both people bleed. Just one goes to the morgue. One goes to the hospital. <laughs> right. That's the end of it. Right. So there's some stuff where it's like, okay, yeah, if, if two guys are whipping on a knife, I don't mind dipping more into the, like, ridiculous, they're dueling and fencing with the knives and <laughs> yeah, there's right. wide art cuts. Because you know what? I don't want the rip, rip, should stab, we, stab. I'm sorry, but should we go into Peter Pan's odds oh my using a dagger God. against Captain Hook with a rapier? Do we want to go into why that's a bad... No, Peter, just, Peter it's Pin- excluded. It's Peter, a cartoon. Peter Pincushion is what happens, yeah, right. but anywho. It's a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I agree. It's why you don't want to see true fights to the death. I mean, certain things, like the Bourne movies, I was just talking to someone about mm-hmm. this, um, and the third one, when they're, he's like shattering things over their head and stuff, it's like, they, you, you dabble in with that, but you do not want to see full-on no, no, street yeah. fights. And you know what? This is where cutaway shots are so beautiful. Like, you, you can have kind of the the view of the, the hero or the protagonist or the person who's winning. Nails him in the, it nails him in the face really hard. It disorients them. 
grabs something sharp and swings, and you just hear the noise, and the guy just slumps to the ground, right. and the dude's like shaking off his hand. Right. I like that because you know what, and it happens all the time in cartoons and anime where they can't show it. Right. You know, like there's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle series from like I don't know how long ago, maybe five or six years ago, where they had the dark evil, you know, the, or the dark future storyline where everything went to hell in a handbasket and you know they had a scene where one of the turtles got killed and you heard the noise what was this from this was from this was from um the fox new or the fox network teens Mutant Ninja turtles they we killed were, one of them this was a, this was an alternate timeline dark dark future like was it a one-off or like a dream it was a it was a what would happen if the guy hadn't gone back and fixed things. So it was like the this time travel. Sounds really one. awesome. What is this? <laughs> I, I, you know, I'll look it up. But like, right, I find I, it. I think Donate- we find it. We'll link it. Yeah, I think Donatello lost an arm, or Leonardo did. Somebody okay. like it was a terrible That's future, cool. post-apocalyptic. One of the turtles died and got killed with a weapon. They right. didn't show it, but you knew what happened. Right. right. Um, that kind of stuff. It's not fun to watch. And. There's, there, like, for instance, like we'll bring up Watchmen later, but Watchmen is such a good example. I of... can't stand the fighting. Some, some of the fighting in that movie, um, like the first scene when the what was his name, the comedian, the comedian's fighting. When he that fight's great. That has so much tension in it, and you're like, oh my gosh. But then there's certain scenes where they're like breaking joints left and right. And I'm like, ugh, I don't, I can't oh, watch yeah. this. And and you know what? And there there is that one dynamic where I do enjoy. Because I literally think there was multiple joints that got shattered out in one in one scene, and I was like, "How many times do I have to see this?" Oh, we always joke when we when we when we play Arkham that oh, oh my yeah. god, how often Batman does it? Like pretend that pretend for a moment that Batman doesn't kill half the people he's fighting with, or yeah, permanently paralyzed, yeah. And I had the to way break he you. breaks the knees, it's like that leg's never gonna work. Again. No, you know what? You fractured the guy's neck. You've left him face down in the snow. Oh, that's my favorite. In one. negative ten degree weather, he does overnight. It's it's what we talked about. By the way, <laughs> he punches them in the back of the head to knock him out and leaves him face down in a puddle. <laughs> that guy's aspirated water. He dies and, either yeah, now or from snowing. pneumonia. Yeah, and it's snowing. Yeah. <laughs> and let's be honest, the cops aren't going to be worried about that guy. Right. <laughs> so, like, less is more. Um, you know, shock value. We'll start with shock value. Is where where we're going with that. Well, Don't no, jump and, the shark. Well, you know what? Even being very being brutally brief, right. you know, like there, I forget which movie I saw this in, but there's a dude that the guard grabs him and the guy just takes his thumb, bends it backwards, oh. nails the guy in the in the side of the head, and then takes his takes his face and puts his thumb through his eye. Oof. And then the guy slumps to the ground, and the dude walks away. The whole scene takes less than fifteen seconds, mm-hmm. and that's all you see. But it's like. What? Yeah, right. Like, and that affected me way more than the brutal beatdowns that happen in a lot of the movies we right, get to watch. Right. Where, you know, and, and, and no, no go offense to these it. guys, you know, because um, you go with it. You're like, if somebody is that brutal, that is how a fight would go. Oh yeah, if, it's, if it's, somebody is that is lethal intent and is yeah. this skilled, the fight's not going to draw out. And you know what? Let's talk about when there's like when there's like two. Green Beret dudes, whatever it is, two masters going at it. It's, it's like that fight should only be like a minute or two max because. Well, according to legend, the Mac, second one of them gets the upper saying, hand, they're going oh, it's, to it's, like it's, break. They're going to break their joints, a, and then they're going to choke them out or gouge their eyes. Like it's gonna be like, oh yeah, if they respect each other, of like, if I mess up, I'm dead. I'm not playing around. Like this fight's over quick. Oh yeah, either I'm dead or you're dead. That's the only way. And, you know, you have Spetsnaz, who, from what I've understood... But, uh, honestly, that's the way I would fight, but, yeah, I'm not a master. I've never been in a, in a deadly well, situation. Well, le- so. legitimately, it's, it's, it's real consequences. You know, you have Spetsnaz, right. whose who's opinion is seal opponent's movements and deliver a, a, a respiratory attack. Right. Prevent them from breathing. Navy SEAL, and granted, I, I don't know this stuff for a fact. This is what I've learned from word of mouth or research. Navy SEALs, I kind of, I have much more of a primary source thing. Right. So... From a friend of mine who worked with the Buds combat team, so I'm going to cite my—I'm not going to cite my source. I'm going to say where I got this information. Most Navy SEAL and most Delta and most combat from American style is remove consciousness, prevent cognitive function. So head, take that out the head, head, because then they can't make decisions. Oh. You can't react. You're sensory disabled. And so at the end, of the, by the way, for first any 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 Marine, any Ranger, any. Military personnel who's actually had to be in the thick of it will tell you if you have to use your hand-to-hand combatives, you probably screwed up. 
You're probably about to die. Somewhere. Actually, I shouldn't even say you're screwed up. The situation is not ideal. Right. Something, somebody screwed up or well, something went wrong. I'm sorry. Let's talk about Saving Private Ryan then real quick. Oh, no. Yeah, uh, perfect the example. Scene, the scene where, yeah, he ends up fighting the guy in the house. Yeah, where the Jew gets stabbed in the heart by a Nazi. Yeah. Terrible scene to watch in terms of oh, just my gosh. the feels. Yeah. And, well, and then you have the whole thing with the guy who doesn't have courage in the hallway. God, yeah, you're like, not him, not by that asshole, but not by that person. He kind of redeemed himself, I guess, at the end, when he, like, after the fighting was done, when he... <laughs> I was so mad, because when they were, like, pinning him down, spoiler alert, <laughs> what was the Again, rule? what's the, what's the after rule? After 15 years? <laughs> yeah, 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 you don't get to call When they're pinning him down at the end, and then the guy, <laughs> he literally... Is seeing a whole line of them, like I'm, like they, he's underneath, and there's a whole line of these guys pinning down Tom Hanks and the other guy. It's like he didn't do it. I know I didn't do it because he would have died. He wouldn't have gotten out of them all. But he literally, if he could have, if he opened fires down this line, yeah, he like kills twenty dudes. Oh yeah, before he dies. But, but, the, but he's thinking, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, right, oh my god, right. oh my god. Which understandable. But anyway, so yeah, the guy ended up going hand to hand. Once you're going hand to hand, like let's play that out. If even if he kills that not the, the Nazi there, he's still dead. <laughs> well, and and that's the thing too, like knife versus unarmed. And and here's where movies can be dangerous. Let me be very clear. Movies are not real. TV shows are not real. And God forbid, manga and anime are so <laughs> far you, away Mike. from real. Thank you for clearing that one up. You you dude, you would be terribly shocked. Right. We think we know, but yeah, from it, but it's it's one of those things where you know, and, and, and any combat instructor worth their salt, any martial art. Well, most instructor. guys that have been in that situation would, would not be able to work on a movie. I don't think it's something with like, yeah, okay, I'll, we can do a year long shoot of me teaching you how to properly kill people because I know because I did it. Like they probably wouldn't want to. No, do no, that. no, no, they don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're not going to dwell there. No, and, and even the shows and movies that go about their business to make it as realistic as possible. I, you know, you talk to these people, nine point, you know, ninety nine 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 point, whatever, how many nines you want to put out of whatever number of one and zeros you want to ratio. You have a knife. I don't. You're, I'm way bigger than you and I have lots more training. I'm probably not going to win. Mm. Period. That's right. it. I have a better shot than I did if I hadn't known what I was doing. Right. Which is why it's, I still say, hey, learn, learn what to do. That being said, you're going to lose. And movies do a understandably not great job about this because we want to have the hero be better than reality. So us getting nitpicky, but there's there's times where it's like okay, the the unarmed kung fu guy manages to defeat twenty armed individuals with chainsaws and and, <laughs> and flamethrower swords, and it's just like wait a minute, right? You know, I just thought of a really good example of this um, book of Eli. There's a scene early on where they're fighting with chainsaws and stuff, the bandits, and it's uh, the way they do it. So, okay, this is what I want to get into. You need to look for stylish thing. Like, stylistically, there are ways to make a fight scene really good without crazy choreography. Mm -hmm. So, the Book of Eli, he steps under the bridge. And you know what? You only the see was... the silhouettes. You only see the silhouettes yep. of this whole fight. And it is a really short fight. I mean, he kills, like, five dudes. But, I mean, you see, like, the one guy, he, like, hits his arm away and just disembowels him right there. Well, and this turns is, around, cuts this dude's arm off. Like it's just, and the fight only takes like twenty seconds, maybe, for him to kill like five or six dudes. But it's brutal. But it's not like and disgusting about, yeah. because of the style, the way they did it, having him step under that underpass. I love. I think that was so bright. And so you only see the silhouettes of everything that's happening. Well, and this is where, and and, and I'm going about to contradict myself. They're the one, and, and I guess to any would be attackers who are going to go after somebody who knows what they're doing if they don't. <laughs> yeah, right. Skill is a force multiplier when dealing with people who don't have any skill. So on the one hand, it kind of washes out in a way in, in terms of probability, but you have a guy, in this case Eli, who for some reason is blind and still is well, able... Well, spoilers. <laughs> oh, shoot, I'm sorry. Nah, that one's about... That's, that one came out in high school. That one's about six uh, years old. That, that, it's not a well-kept secret, so I'll get yeah. it on. But still, at that point in the movie, though, by the, you, it, know, it, you don't yeah, know that's he's true, blind. Actually, and, and so yeah, I, I, fair enough. You, this is a retrospect. You know, he's blind. He can't see, but he can still appropriate set for some reason. You know, the movie alludes that it's, it's it's God's premonition, but he's able to back up into the darkness. Where yeah, they can see him, but their depth perception is all right. wacky. It's, he, he, he's, so, <laughs> he's at an advantage, yeah. And the likelihood that these raiders actually know how to use these weapons connectively is like is unlikely. So 
Again, and these are little details that don't right. need to be actually stated, but are kind of filtered in. That, so we but that's it. what separates like a really good movie and a good fight scene from a bad one. So yeah, ha- happy medium. Less is more. You know, we want we're talking. We like a little bit more realism, but not too much realism. Yeah. Um, and just don't think that like the BA scale is not just um, exponential. Like you can't just keep making it more and more awesome by adding more of everything. It's like you have to be tasteful with it. So let's talk about CG, computer generated effects <laughs> specifically, and their role in fight scenes. See, we got a good metaphor. We have a really good. Uh, it's an alright metaphor. It's a pretty good metaphor. So what is what is CG, Mike? CG is metaphorically. Frost. It's frosting. It's frosting on a cupcake. There's certain things that you can't do as well with practical effects that CG is good for, admittedly. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, um, uh, and with on the slow mo front, and gore. on the slow mo front, th- this isn't a perfect example, but to bring it back to uh, something like Dark Knight Rises, there's only one slow mo scene in the whole thing, and it's when you first see Batman, or not when you first see him, but it's when he takes down the biker dude, mm-hmm. and then he. And then you just see it in slow mo as he steps up, and as the camera pans up, and it's super epic right there. Oh yeah, slow mo, in my opinion, is where you give the audience a detailed view of something that they can't have otherwise. Right, it's happening too fast in real time, and so it is a again, it is all about the viewer's experience on an ethereal level, not on a I'm going to just pile this on because it's cool level. Right. You know, for instance, like it is the frosting. Like C- or slow mo is, is like CG. It's the frosting. It can't be yeah. at all. It can't be the basis of what you're doing because you're not going to want to come back to that. It doesn't leave you wanting for more. Yeah, and honestly, for me, like the slow mo mo- movements are really good for like if the dude is the dude is dodging, the dude is contorting his body to 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 avoid a well delivered stroke. And you see the fact that he's recognizing where it is, and he's watching, and it, and it kind of demonstrates the mastery of the right. of the protagonist. And then it snaps right out of it. It's a one, two, and then back. And it, and and there needs to be that contrast where you understand you're seeing it from his perspective, where you know that it's it's tied to a real experience, the adrenaline dump, where everything feels a lot slower. Right. It happens, and and this is why you go into it more. And again, this is this is this is a good mix of I want to delve into the fantasy I want to delve into the experience of what I think things would be like right and and, and granted not everyone's going to be happy no matter which one it is there are some people like like, like Riza he loves kung fu movies if he were to in this, be in this conversation we would not have a very quiet time about it right but then you he's have like we need more wires we need more flipping we need more slow-mo we need more <laughs> yeah and, and, and to be fair he's entitled to his likes but I, I, I do think, at least for us... Well, at least he's catering to a, a, like we said, a genre that you go into it for that. Exactly. And, I mean, we're kind of coming from it as an angle of what makes objectively a better movie, in our opinion. <laughs> well, we, and we've been <laughs> What spoiled, we subjectively you know? think is objective. Yeah. Well, we've been spoiled. I, I mean, you know, for instance, we have movies like, you know, we, we grew up where we weren't really paying attention to the quality through the Tim Burton and the Schumacher Batman. Right, right. And then we got... Nolan's verse. Yeah, right. And, and then every superhero movie following, where they finally realize, like, if we take this stuff seriously, as it, it seems childish and the, the subject matter is ridiculous, but these people love it so much that we need to give it the property to people who love it equally as much as the fans and are going to pay as much attention and give it the importance that it deserves, exactly. even if it is ridiculous. And I think we prevent campiness that way, right. which campiness has become a sin in right. a way. And, I mean, fine, depending on how many comic book guys you're having the argument with, your mileage may vary on that part, but that's a whole other podcast in and of itself. <laughs> right, we'll probably get to that. But, you know, that actually feeds into the, into the other, into, into another, you know, issue that I've had with martial arts movies and fight movies and fight scenes is the, the archetypes that become cliches, you know. The master, the old master who dodges everything and flips his beard and laughs, like, <laughs> Kill Bill, and you know, actually, I love that because because that's, it's making fun of. He's poking that. fun at that, and he's taking a real character from Chinese mythology who was that overpowered, right. Pai Mei, and putting it in, in like he says, you know what? <laughs> Here it is, right, right. And it's great. And and I'm gonna actually gonna make this guy as ridiculous as he is. Yeah, and, and do the whole airplane oh. thing. It, I realize how stupid this is. That's yeah, <laughs> right. Just go with it. Right. And 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 you're like, okay, fair enough. But again, that's again, it's 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 a it's a suspension of disbelief. This is a world where 
world class assassins who clearly can shoot choose to kill people with swords. <laughs> right. This is not the weirdest thing that's happened in the movie. Right. The Loki pokey stick does not apply here. <laughs> right. But um, you know, and, and and the other thing, the wide sweeping kung fu movements, Aikido in general. I'm gonna be brief. Is that Wait, what? It, it, it it's 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 a. That's the term, and we'll get to that specifically. But bullshito is a is a, is a term used by many of the quote unquote, and there's a little arrogance, and there's a little bit of a of a style versus style children arguing on the internet. Fine, this. <laughs> where you know what, for instance, the five arts on the top of my head that I recommend that are you're going to get bang for your buck, you're going to be able to actually fight, and not necessarily this order: boxing, muay thai, Brazilian jiu jitsu, submission wrestling, and kickboxing as a whole. You know, those are the five really solid foundations. Some types of karate, some types of taekwondo. Stray away from the ones where you're not actually hitting each other. <laughs> but you get stuff like Aikido, where there is no live practice. There isn't any. It's built into their That's dogma. Just for movies, or it, I, I'm trying to be very. Non offensive about quite this. The exasperated <laughs> exhale right there. Well, again, I have no idea who might listen to this, but uh, anyways, if it looks contrived on a set where people are moving slow, right? There's a spoiler alert there. It might actually not work. Well. <laughs> and Kung Fu strays into this a lot. Well, what was the was the what's the breakdance fighting? Capoeira. Capoeira. Now, Capoeira is a whole strange beast because they don't fight like that. That's how they train. Hmm. So in a real fight, so it's not meant to be a real fight. Yeah, so. capuista, cap, uh, capuista, capuisto. They can actually. They're very explosive. They're highly trained, and they don't fight like that. Yeah. It's all you know. But then again, it's very pretty to watch, and so there has to be a, a, a blend. Like Never Back Down had a very cliched and awesome scene where the capoeira guy is doing all these cool breakdance moves, and he's the guy that's been a capoeira guy in every movie, the same Brazilian with the dreadlock beads. And, <laughs> and he does it, and he does the handstand, and comes over and tries to do it, and the dude just drops him with one Knocks hand. him out right away. I think just I've seen bank. that. Scene. And I love it, because granted, I'm not necessarily saying that any capoeira guy moving that rapidly is going to be easily knocked out. Uh, there's a reason why that's not the, the why main... Why don't see it yeah. <laughs> in so, real life. Where that comes from, and, and the kung fu... I can go on, on I can go on that route for hours. Right. Partially because kung fu, a lot of the really nasty stuff is eye gouging. It's getting them in the throat. It's doing stuff that will, unless well, it's you a know finisher. What? Let's just bring this game thrones real quick. Um, it's funny because whenever Braun fights the gar- the knight from the Vale, and like everyone's pissed. Oh, when he wins. Serious. A because the the guy from the Vale lost, but also just the way he did it was so boring. He just tied him out and then stabbed him in the neck. Oh yeah. And Bron's like, they're like, you don't fight with honor. He's like, oh, I don't. Well, he fought with honor, and he just went out the moon door. <laughs> yeah. So he's down there. It's just it's funny. It, it, a lot of times, the boring stuff is what is actually effective. Well, I love how they're they're gonna, they're like, we'll give you armor. He's like, eh, I'll move better without it. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, he's like, okay, I've never trained with this armor. I'm not used to fighting with this armor. Right. He's used to fighting with that armor. No, I'll stick to being a, right. being mobile, and that's where it kind of like. You can toy with it. And George R. R. Martin, I love how he does fighting in his world. It is there's enough BS to where it's still fun. Like like Tyrion being in the bat like in the books I found out Tyrion's way more BA. Oh yeah. Granted that's also because they like people don't notice him until he's under that's you true. chopping you with an axe. You're that's like true. what? Half man? Ah dead. <laughs> and that and also too, he is he is Braum. Right. Or Braun he is Braun, not Braum. He is Braun. Like always with him, right. preventing him from dying. That's kind of part of it. <laughs> but so, Mike, I think we've done a pretty good job of covering it. Um, where we're at, you know, what we yeah. like to see in terms of making a good movie, it needs that balance. Less is more. It needs to be more realistic, but obviously, you can take some liberties. Yeah, we're not saying you can't have CG, but don't have like in the Matrix the whole character flying around in CG when half of the fight was. Oh yeah. Was chor- live choreography. <laughs> Keep the deceptive martial art moves that are long and elliptical, or the crane kicks, once in a while. Right. They're sparingly. Right. You know, they work because they're deceptive. You're not deceptive if you keep doing it. I get it. I learn. <laughs> right. You know. That's like karate, karate Kid, man. That is that movie's not karotically correct. Or Antonio Gates. Ref him. <laughs> it's not karotically <laughs> correct because if I just swept his leg and it's injured, and he yeah. does a crane pose, I'm just going to... 
not charge head f- face first into, into the one thing Move he can Move sideways. Do, Suddenly he can't kick. kick you. If his hand's like here, or what is he going to do? Is he going to be able to hit you in any meaningful way? No. The only thing he can do is jump up and try to kick you. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so, yeah, you need that happy medium with a lot of the stuff. I mean, that's why these debates are funny, obviously. It just about always comes down to that. Except for the certain genres where we're fine. Take it over the top. Do what you want to do. And when it's supposed to be a harder-hitting movie, more visceral, it's like, you can have your liberties. We're not saying doing that, but just be tasteful with it. Mm-hmm. Like with Book of Eli, add a little flair. Try to be more creative other than, like, what if we just had more explosions in slow motion? Right. <laughs> Captain America, Captain... Oh, I mean, you so, know, yeah, let's yeah, talk I, about some I, of our favorite scenes real quick to end this, Mike. Why do they work? Uh, we both agreed this was very high on our list. Captain America 2 blew me away with the fight choreography, especially of the captain himself. Well, actually, he's pretty much the only good one. Yeah. Um, just the fact that he takes down an entire submarine. Of people. Of people. Convincingly. Convincingly. He never even stopped running. No, and it's the element of surprise. He's not beating people who are trying to shoot him with a fist fight. Right. I mean, it's different when he has the shield and that can block and he can do that stuff. But no, he's literally like, okay, I gotta do this quickly so that I, ma- I minimize the number of people shooting me at me at once. <laughs> this is very, this is very logical and this is very mathematic. Right. Like, Go! And the way he fought was just so um, direct. I mean... Oh, as corny as it is, it's called battle gymnastics. And that is literally the term used right. in the comics. Like, it was funny because if he jumped, it was usually because he had them, like, locked in position. Like, there's a lot of times where he would jump and, like, wrap his arms around their legs because he already had their elbow locked and had them in... Fa- you know what I mean? It was, like, yeah. a quick way to jump and take them down. It wasn't like, I'm coming at you and I'm not, I'm jumping and flipping through the air. Yeah. No, he had you and he was... It, it was very judo. Actually, the actual, I mean, not the corny chop thing, judo. <laughs> Taking them, binding their movements, directing them where they're going to land, and making sure you land on them and they go down. Right. Awesome. Um, definitely the best. That was the best super fight choreography hero. in a superhero movie. Period. Part on. I don't even, like... Spider-Man easily. may give it a run with its money because of the, um, the well, extension sp- circumstances involved yeah. there. Spider-Man's allowed to be a little bit more ridiculous, so... But it's, 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 yeah, it... I guess apples and oranges. Yeah. Now, for the Kung Fu, I'm just going to list off well, the here, yeah. Here's one from... Here's a movie where it's in a genre where you're allowed to be ridiculous, but they do a good job of balancing it. Eat Mun! Which is one of Mike's favorites, the Eat Mun. This yeah. one pushes it a little bit at times, but, you know, I know what you mean. I forget what his fighting two, style two, 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 Wing Chun, and two, Wing Chun. two way more than one. One, but one actually, one keeps it locked it's pretty well. Mm-hmm. And... Again, Wing Chun's linear. It's very linear. There's not a lot of sweeping. It's... Well, isn't it? It's like, okay, I have you vulnerable, now I punch you like a hundred times real fast in the yeah. same spot. <laughs> and you know, just, I'm not... And, and, it, and literally, it was a response to how non-linear all other kung fu forms were in China. And that's why it works so well. Right. I'm just going to go right at your center of mass while you're going not going at mine. Yeah. And, and then, I'm taking you down now. <laughs> and it's just blunt, blunt force. I'm going to keep going. Right. And you know, and on that note, anything... With with you know and, and anything with Jackie Chan in it, right? That's not too. I mean, because the problem is he does get too comedic sometimes. Yeah, Jackie Rush Chan hour. does get over the top, but it's like his thing. Of course, like he's beating up a dude with a sofa chair. It's like that looks ridiculous. Or yeah, what, you know whatever whatever it is. Um, but he's the only one that can do that. And then there's no CG involved, so nope. you, that's it's why it's cool right? because he's actually doing it. So you're like, this is ridiculous. But he's actually doing but it. We love it. Yeah, right. You're like, he's actually doing this right now. I can't argue that. I mean, no. Obviously, th- these guys are just letting him punch them in the face. But eh, you know, whatever. <laughs> well, and and, and, and then you, you have kind of a downgrade from him, a guy who does actually have some of the some of the funny stuff once in a while, but it's much more of a contrast to his actual personality, Jet Li, who most people will compare to as like a younger, more sober version. Right. Of, yeah, and, 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 I mean, and I mean sober in flavor, not drinking. He doesn't have the charisma of Jackie Chan. That, that, was a, that wasn't a drunken style joke on my part. But, um, <laughs> Dude, yeah. Drunk Chan's the best. Oh be my honest. God, love it. Drunken Master, watch Jackie it. It's Chan, on Hulu. Jackie Chan fists the fire uh, for, I don't know if it was for Sega or whatever, but you can play as Drunk Chan and he's OP. Yeah. And then we have Bruce Lee, the golden oldie that everybody, everybody kind of just I mean, he goes to. he laid the foundation. He did, and you know what? He he had the right blend. You know what? He 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 gave people what he want, what people wanted. Mm. The weird karate, like they call it karate, they call it kung fu, but it was mostly karate. With you know, it, it was just it was in in his no, no special effects. It was just bam, and j- g- gauging the fact that these martial arts had not been adapted to film before. Right. Incredible what he and, and his crew were able to do. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and that whole group that you know the first really good blend of 
of martial art athletes, Chuck Norris too. You know, you got to give it to them. Being able to kick that precisely for camera before right. they even knew what they were doing, excellent. Right. Um, they were they really like blazed the trail, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> and and along that vein, you have the pinnacle, in my opinion. And I'm only I'm I'm, I, I, I'm not even going to try to describe it. Just go watch it. Type in Yuri Boyka. U or Y U R I B O Y K A. Well, you know, we'll we'll link, we'll link it, it. Just search that. The fight scenes from the Undisputed series. Movie is stupid. The plot is moronic. Don't bother. <laughs> Just watch this. The fight, fight scenes movie. are sublime. It is the pinnacle, in my opinion, of what these guys are trying to get to, where you have it's feasible and yet it's so good. Yeah. But anyways. I mean, it is over the top <laughs> and not feasible, but it's almost feasible. And the guy is such an athlete that whoever the actor was that. Scott Atkins, yeah. he's, he's 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 so athletic that you're buying it, and it, it, yeah. it hits. Like when he's hitting these guys, it feel it doesn't feel like in Ro- like in Rocky when you can tell they're pulling punches and stuff. It's like no, it, it you believe, you buy it, you buy it wholeheartedly. So yeah, and he is and he's doing all the acrobatics and and stuff. It's not none, none of it's even wire work or anything like that. So Ooh, mad respect. It's yeah. I, I mean, I'll agree. I, I I don't go for it quite as much, but I get why you would call it pinnacle. I definitely agree. Um, and it's brutal too. <laughs> yeah, and then, speaking of brutal, and then, yeah, one of my favorites. <laughs> I know this movie takes a lot of guff for the lack of the fight scenes, but The Dark Knight Rises, the first fight between Batman and Bane. Say what you will about Batman, isn't nearly as. I wondered what would break first, your spirit <laughs> or your body. I think you got the <laughs> at the wrong point. <laughs> I don't remember now. I'm curious. When does he break his back? I think he lifts him up over his head. Your spirit or your body? Or does he crack him first? I don't remember. Or does it matter? <laughs> it probably doesn't matter. It's still, I mean, yeah. But the thing with that fight scene was that there's no music, and it's just totally visceral. Like, when Bane's walking down the metal platform at him, he's just thump, thump, thump. And then, like, Batman's punching him right in the face, and then he's just still coming at him unfazed. Um, it really does a good job, uh, I feel, of making you feel like that. Like, genuine dread. That they're out of either with an actual hammer fist, which is the bottom of my hand repeatedly hitting Well, you know, it's funny. I don't remember now the angle of the audience yet, but it seems like they're a rap. Oh, he's boom, 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 yeah. boom. It's a battering ram. I don't need to I don't need to wind up full way. I just need to keep hitting you in the You're same You're not spot. defending it in any way. Yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> you know, just... I don't need to, like, really hit... I, it doesn't have to be this one punch. <laughs> nope. I like to think at the beginning of that movie, the bat, the bat is, like, cracking the ice. Yeah. I like to think that is his mask cracking as Bane punches him in the head. Yeah, so that one I feel really, of course it's a little bit theatrical, there's a monologue that happens in it. It's a movie, whatever, but it does a good balance. We are both initiated. It did a good job of kind of taking the happy medium we talked about with all this stuff. Yep. So, you know, that's it guys for this week and our, you know, fight choreography, martial art and movies rant. Yep. This will not be the last time you'll hear about it, most likely. Uh, of course not. Of course not. Mike <laughs> enjoys this stuff too much. Too darn much. But, you know, to hold that against him, you know, you can't deny the guy his soul. So, we hope you guys enjoyed it. We hope we get you noticing these things and thinking about them more. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people, I think, go into it, oh, it's popcorn flick. You know, they don't think about it. But, hey, we're taking this stuff so seriously as fans, you know, why not? Let's, let's just go all in with yeah. this stuff. You know, why is Spider-Man swinging that way? That's just silly. Um, <laughs> get, get that ridiculous with it if you want. But hopefully, you guys start picking this stuff out for yourself. Let us know what you think. Let us know some other good scenes. If we haven't seen, you know, hopefully we've seen it. But if we haven't, I'd like to see. I'm always down to watch a good fight scene. Oh yeah. So thanks for tuning in, guys. This week, Mike. Any last words? Like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. And. um... Honestly, if you guys like this, let us know. You know, if if, if I need to just shut up about this stuff, yeah, if you've heard let enough, us know. We'll move on. <laughs> if you enjoyed it, you know, we might even we could always compile more scenes. I mean, or even man, ooh, what, what what if we went into anime? Oh man, yeah, that's endless right there. That's a rabbit hole. Yeah, Dragon Ball Z. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, they, bro- they broke all the rules. Let's talk about <laughs> ten episodes later. <laughs> I just, I just want to have Dragon Ball Z and then the SpongeBob guy. Ten episodes later. <laughs> but anyways, guys, thanks for, thanks for listening. Adios. Catch you later. Two thousand years later. Six and a half hours later. A few inches later. Day two. Day three. Day four. A few moments later. 
One eternity later. Three days later. Twelve seconds later. Three twenty-eight. A.M. Three weeks later, many months later. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting, and they had to hire a new one. Tomorrow, tomorrow for sure. Eventually, uh, twelve o'clock midnight. Two hours later. Meanwhile, eight o one p.m. The next day later. Twenty minutes later. Six hours later. Several bad puns later. One hour later. Two hours later. Three hours later. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time cards. Cards. More.